Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this uh, video uh, there's only going to be basically one video for the theory aspect of this chapter, chapter 6, the challenges, challenges of accounting, standards, internal control, audits, fraud, and ethics. Um, this chapter um, is pretty much self-explanatory so go back and read the text. Um, I am not going to cover all of the different things like Sarbanes-Oxley and all of, you know these types of things. Um, that is something that you can read and basically memorize. And this chapter is one of those kinds of memorization kind of things where but to be honest with you, I don't even memorize it. Um, again, when it comes to memorization, I can look that stuff up. But I do understand uh, the idea behind the different uh, aspects of this chapter. Um, and therefore, I don't need to just re you know, reread, basically, the chapter itself. So I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, the two things out of this chapter that um, I, I felt needed or... Uh, to a certain extent should be covered our audit opinions and of course the section on the focus on decision making so when it comes to audit opinions um, what happens is you know your CPA will come into your business and do an audit now uh, for those who are taking or who are in the accounting curriculum um, in your junior year or your senior year you will have one whole subject that deals with auditing uh, so I'm not going to get into what happens during audits and things like that. However, it is important for everybody, including business managers and so on and so forth, that they understand what you know audit opinions are. So you have this third party, you know, the CPAs who come in and who go through your books and you know uh, look for things and basically audit to make sure things are correct, and then they uh, give an opinion on your financial statements. And they break it down into uh, these four different types of opinions. Uh, come on, let me get my pen here. Um, you know, you have an unqualified, an, uh, which is also called a clean opinion. Right now, I'm not going to reread what's in you know the reasons supporting the opinion or the impact on the results of the opinion. I mean, read those and again uh, understand what's all involved. All right, um, but they give four different opinions, an unqualified one, qualified, adverse, and a disclaimer. All right. So the way you think about it is uh, the unqualified is, a, an, is an overview. Definitely read and understand these uh, supporting reasons and the impact of the results of the opinion. But an unqualified basically says everything's fine. You know, your books are good, they're clean, you've been following generally accepted accounting principles, you know, you've been doing what you need to do. You know, so, you know, uh, bookkeepers have been, you know, uh, putting the data in the right, in the proper places. The accountants have made sure that everything belongs where it goes, and you're able to create financial statements that can be relied upon. Qualified, um, is is okay i mean obviously you, you know you want the unqualified right qualified sort of like is these are okay except for maybe this or that maybe uh the uh auditor thought that you know this should have been handled uh, you know in this way or that way uh, a thought that just popped into my head um you know since we were talking about in the last chapter um and you know whether you're using say FIFO or LIFO, okay, or um, average costing, well, maybe um, for whatever reason you had originally started out with FIFO, okay, and based upon the growth of your business, now remember, you don't go changing your methods without a good reason, okay, so maybe, um, you know, you've been using FIFO for all of this time, and because of the growth of your business or uh, how your business has changed or whatever have you, maybe the auditors feel that um, using LIFO is better, okay? Um, or, you know, you should be using LIFO. And so what they'll do is they'll give you uh, a qualified uh, opinion, which means it's, you know, it's fine, um, but those who are reading the 
uh, a financial statement should be thinking along the lines of, okay, this is good except for this or except for that. You know, how would you know changing from FIFO to LIFO actually change the financial statements if you went with that particular method? So qualified is not uh, um, the end of the world. Um, it's you know it's acceptable, all right. But there are some changes that have to be made, and then of course adverse. You know, obviously you don't want that, okay. Um, and if you have an, an adverse opinion on the, if they have an adverse opinion on the financial statements, that means if I'm an investor, I can't rely upon that information whatsoever. And the same thing with the disclaimer, okay. With the disclaimer, the auditors are basically saying they can't make an opinion one way or the other. And from an investor's perspective, well, if the owner can't make an opinion one way or the other, then I can't trust that information. So, you know, you definitely do not want these two, okay? This one, you know, you're qualified is acceptable, but, you know, if you're keeping your books correctly, you, you shouldn't have any problem getting an unqualified opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, you know, throughout the entire chapter, you know, go back and, and reread everything and all of the, you know, ideas and concepts in the chapter. Um, but pay uh, particular attention to these audit opinions because they'll just keep coming up again and again and again all through the rest of your, uh, you know, uh, the life of any and everybody's business. I mean, if you're work, even if you are working for somebody else, um, you know, and you're going to have to have financial statements created in order to get a bank loan. Um, yeah, if you have an account there, they're able to create those financial statements, but uh, sometimes that bank might say, hey, you know, we want this done by, you know, uh, a third party being a CPA, and they'll come in and they'll give an, uh, you know, an audit opinion on it. So it's, uh, you know, these are, you know, something that you will see again and again and again in the rest of your business life. All right. So lastly here, we're going to move on to focus on decision making. Now, as you recall, the accounting equation right, is, you know, assets equals liabilities plus equity, okay? And in this section on the focus on decision making, um, the formula that was given was, you know, what's our stockholders equity? You know, it's our assets minus our liabilities. Okay, so all we did was we just rearranged the accounting equation. Okay, so this is nothing new. Um, what is important about understanding what the stockholders' equity is is, um, you know, whether uh, you know the business is an ongoing concern or for when you close the business. Let's just uh, to get a, a little bit better perspective. It's easier to talk about when the business closes. Okay, so I'm going to refer to it as when the business closes now. And I'm just going to throw in some numbers here. Let's say, and I don't know if these numbers work, it really doesn't matter. But let's say there's 100,000 in assets, there's 70,000 in liabilities, and 30,000 in equity. Okay, so, you know, yeah, here's my 30,000 in equity, um, 100,000 in assets, minus 70,000 in liabilities. Okay. Now, here's the, here's the important thing about this. Yes, my accounting equation... Um, can't, you know, is in balance. And to take a quick look at the business and say, okay, the stockholder's equity is 30000 you know, that's a little bit naive. I mean, that is on paper. What happens is, is when a business closes, they take those assets and they have to liquidate the assets. In other, you know, they have to convert those assets into cash and pay off those liabilities. Well, you know, let's say, um, I mean, obviously cash is cash, but let's say you have accounts receivable of, say, 20000 okay? Well, you know, if you went and said, hey, um, I want you to pay off your accounts receivable, you know, are you going to get the full 20000 in accounts receivable? Unlikely. Right, because you're wanting it right now, and people, you know, if I if I owe three thousand dollars, I might not have three thousand in cash to pay you immediately. And what will also happen is a lot of people will say, "Oh, well, that they're going out of business, so why should I pay them?" Okay, uh, so you're not going to get the full twenty thousand dollars in your accounts receivable. The same thing with your uh, with your uh, assets. I mean, if you had, you know, 
um, a computer and you paid 5000 for it, you know, and let's say you've depreciated at 1000 right, on your books you're showing that, you know, the value, the book value of that computer is 4000 Well, if you try to go and sell it and you need to liquidate it because you're closing, you know, you're not going to be able to wait around a year in order to try to get 4000 No, it's going to continue to depreciate and you might only be able to get 2500 for it or 2000 for it. Okay, so the point being here is, is that, you know, this $100,000 in assets does not necessarily mean that's exactly what you're going to get. You're not, at the end of the day, you're not going to get $100,000. You're going to get something less. And whatever you get less, you're going to have to try to pay off that $70,000 in liabilities. Okay. Um, if all of that, you know, can't, if all, if you only get $70,000 from the sale of your assets, it pays off that $70,000 in liabilities, which means your equity is zero. There's no equity in the business. Okay. On paper, when you're looking at financial statements, yes, the stockholders equity, you know, you're sitting there and going, okay, you know, they, you know, the investors have $30,000 into the business and that's a good sign. Obviously, if I was selling off, you know, I, I was recouping my equity, you know, um, let's say we wanted to take twenty thousand dollars out of that equity well that means i'm going to reduce my cash um by twenty thousand okay so i'm only going to have ten thousand dollars in equity and only eighty thousand dollars in assets and i'd still have to pay off the seventy thousand dollars in liability so uh you know having this understanding this relationship a little bit um you know, uh, gives you a little bit of an insight into uh, just exactly, you know, how much this business is worth to someone, okay? Um, you know, you have to consider the assets that you have and how much they're actually worth. You know, you have to pay off the liabilities. That number doesn't change unless you can, you know, manage to negotiate, let's say, you, you know, you owe ten thousand dollars to somebody and you say hey look at you know i'm only going to be able to give you uh pennies on the dollar i'll give you thirty uh three thousand you know take it or leave it and it's funny because as i was just talking about that um uh i was yesterday i actually read on the internet about donald trump and how he would uh you know that this was part of his negotiating tactics with uh, his various vendors um, where he'd say hey take it or leave it you know <laughs> as far as the liabilities because remember he he went into bankruptcy well portions of his enterprise went into bankruptcy in Atlantic City four times uh, over the last like 15 years um, and it's a restructuring uh, bankruptcy which means everybody shares you know they they restructure it so that quote unquote, everybody shares in the responsibility of those liabilities, which I thought was uh, ridiculous because, no, I did the work for you. I should get paid. I shouldn't take a loss on my work, you know, and just to, you know, just because you can't manage your, your business properly. But that's a whole other story. But it, it does point to the fact um, that, um, you know, just because you look at stockholders' equity does not necessarily mean it's exactly what you see okay you have to think through you know what happens with your assets what happens with your liabilities in order to get your stockholders equity all right so like i said that's it for uh you know chapter six in the theory there's not going to be another video here um also too you know there's only the short exercises um, for chapter six there's not going to be any exercises or problems because basically uh, this chapter was about uh, concepts and ideas um, so go back and reread that you know read the chapter and study it i'm not covering anywhere close to everything that was in that chapter right and i'll see you in the next set of videos for the short exercises